Well, hello everyone. Yep, uh, my name is Dr. Austin Murdoch. I am the practitioner at Cairoway North St. Paul. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Cairoway is, we are a multi-location franchise for chiropractic. Um, we have our flagship in Woodbury, but we're all kind of spread out throughout the metro. We do have one in Texas that just opened this summer, and then we have one person over in uh, Menominee Falls over by Milwaukee. So we're growing, it's pretty exciting. Uh, we just signed someone up in Stillwater, excuse me. Uh, they opened yesterday, which was really fun. And uh, we got someone signed up for Hudson pretty soon, and a couple others that are looking to potentially open up over in the eastern states, like Virginia and the Carolinas, which is pretty exciting. So, a little bit about myself. Uh, I was born and raised in the UP. Uh, I spent most of my time in Wisconsin going to school, and then I came over here to Bloomington, where the chiropractic school, Northwestern Health Sciences, is located. Uh, I graduated a couple years ago, and I just kind of stuck around. Uh, after being here for three and a half years, you kind of make a lot of connections, you set down some roots, buy a house, have a kid, stuff like that, you know, and you're kind of stuck then. So I've been here for a couple years. Um, it's been really enjoyable being in Minnesota. There's a lot of neat things, a lot of neat people. Um, had a good time. With that being said, today's conversation, health and wellness. I was, um, when I asked to be a keynote speaker, I really didn't know what I wanted to touch on. And uh, when you're in school, you're going through all these different classes, you're taking all this fancy book work trying to figure out how to pass boards and pass tests and all that good stuff and you don't really think about how you're going to practice and what that means down the road I guess. So a uh, little background for you about chiropractic school. You go through at Northwestern there's 10 trimesters that you go through. My last trimester I took an elective with a radiologist. His name was Dr. Rich. Really clever dude. Uh, I'd get together with him maybe once a week Friday afternoons and sit down with him and eight other students for five hours and we'd go over radiology reports, x-rays, things along those lines. And I think it was our first time sitting down and he asked us all, he was like, hey, what kind of practice do you guys want to run? Do you guys want to run a health practice or do you want to run a wellness practice? I got to be honest, at the time I wasn't really thinking about what kind of practice I wanted to run. I didn't really know. I was just worried about passing my boards, tests, and finishing school and stuff like that. And it was a good question just because then it was like, well, clearly there's a difference if Dr. Rich is going to ask you, what do you want to do? And I was just like, I, I guess I don't know the difference. And, thought about it for a little bit and we kind of had an argument with the eight of us there and just like, well, I, I guess we want to be a health practice just because we're healthcare practitioners. That's what I guess you should be looking at, right? But pretty synonymous, I guess, when you're driving down the road, see different physical therapists, acupuncturists, chiropractors, other healthcare facilities, it will say health and wellness. And it's like, okay, well, are they synonymous or are they different? And um, that conversation I had with them was pretty interesting to me. So. The question that he posed then about health and wellness is who is the healthier man? You have neighbors. You have person A who, you know, has no symptoms. They have a good diet, clean, you know, maybe a salad or eating well balanced and stuff like that. They get a good night's sleep and occasionally working out maybe once or twice a week, going to the gym, going for walks, stuff like that. But unfortunately to them, without their knowledge, they have an active cancer diagnosis somewhere in their body. No symptoms or anything like that though. Person B, their neighbor, Occasional back pain, wakes up, headaches, you know, works out regularly, you know, multiple times a week, mediocre diet, hits the fast food joints every once in a while, poor sleep, but no cancer, no other symptoms, no illnesses and stuff like that. And he asked us, well, who's the healthier individual? The person who's aware or feels crappy about their situation or the person who feels all right and unfortunately has an active cancer diagnosis? We didn't know. We kind of debated about it for a while and it was a good question. And most of us settled on, you know, the cancer-free individual just because the other guy has cancer. It's kind of obvious. You know? So sat down. That was the debate for a hot minute. And um, kind of the crux of his answer was that you know, pain-free does not necessarily mean healthy. Uh, and it was an interesting philosophy, I guess, just because, again, going back in time at that point, you're all focused on boards. You're focused on practicing and getting ready for test taking and stuff like that. Um, majority of people, when you think about chiropractic, they think about back pain. They think about neck pain. They think about headaches and stuff like that. Pain-free doesn't necessarily mean healthy was the point that he was getting across. And I thought that was a really point to take home just because if you ask someone, how are you feeling? How do you, you know, how are you functioning? Things along those lines, most people will respond with, I'm feeling fine. You know, no symptoms or a chronic injury, a little lesser today. You're able to function, go through the, the items of the day. Um, you know, and I think if I asked and polled most of you guys who would be the healthier individual from the previous example, most of you would probably say person B just because they don't have the cancer diagnosis. But if you sit down and you have those two people and you have them argue and say, hey, which one of you is the healthier? They might come to the conclusion that person A, just because they feel 
good. You know, they don't have the symptoms, they don't have the back pain, they don't have the headaches, they can go through their day functionality, eating clean, getting good sleep, things along those lines. But the argument that my professor made, pain-free is not the same as healthy. And he really kind of hammered it home with this x-ray example here. So that was how we launched into our first kind of radiology example where it's just like, all right, this was two patients that came in and these aren't the images that I had at the time, but just pulled them randomly from the internet. And he put them right up on the screen and he said, hey, I have two cases that came in today. I got case A and I have case B. One of them came in with a nine out of 10 pain, extremely uncomfortable, didn't want to walk, it was a hard time breathing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the other person felt totally fine, but part of the schooling is you get a free set of x-rays. Now, you know, dollars to donuts, I think most people would probably point out the first image where you have the lack of end plates, you got lack of, uh, lack of disc height, you got some degenerative, arch, uh, degenerative changes, you got some arthritides. Overall, the x-ray looks pretty poor. The following person, you got really nice end plates, nice and smooth, you got good disc height, you got a nice curvature. Nothing really verifiably wrong with the image. It was kind of goofy because, you know, us being students picked the obvious answer saying, well, the one with the degenerative changes, the arthritides, all these comorbidities and things that you would write a really nice fancy radiology report with fancy terms, that would be the person with the logical pain, correct? Wrong. Uh, the person with the degenerative changes was one of my pathology teachers. His name was Dr. Marcus. And I think he said it had been like 25 years since he had an x-ray. But being in the school, you just got free imaging done. Took them and they looked just like that. Just tons of compression, a lot of arthritides, didn't look very good. Had no complaints whatsoever. Was in the gym all the time, fully functional, moving, grooving, all that kind of stuff. The other person was a 19, 20 year old individual from our school. Um, had an athletic injury, I think they were playing volleyball or something like that and just came down wrong. Pinched something, discomfort in their back. But on the image, it was perfectly clean. IVFs, no verifiable disc damage or anything along those lines. The point that he was getting across is that um, you know, with the health versus wellness debate that he started us with, that an image doesn't necessarily equate to the health or wellness spectrum either. And that pain doesn't necessarily mean that something bad is going on. If you were to look at this, you know, you would say, hey, it's the person with the discomfort and, you know, the terrible imaging, rightfully so, would be the unhealthy individual. It's kind of weird just because their wellness spectrum, they're able to function, do their daily activities, they're able to go to the gym, they're eating right. They're socially active, they're friendly, all that kind of stuff. The other person was, if I remember right from the story that it was given us without too much HIPAA details, was uh, like crutch bound or they were, they were uncomfortable for like a week and a half, two weeks where they were just, they had something pinched and just not right. So long story short, where I'm going with this, the, uh, the health and wellness spectrum is really quite, quite interesting. So when you get to the, the actual definition answer, Health is the state of being free from illness or injury, while wellness is the state of being in good health, uh, especially as an actively pursued goal. So when, from my perspective as a provider and you know, ch uh, chiropractor, practitioner, you really need to kind of act on the difference. Um, health is the general aspects of your everyday life. It's your form function, it's your mental health, it's your social health, it's your religious health, it's your dietary health, it's your family health, it's all these other aspects that make you who you are. The difference being wellness is the pursued aspect of maintaining good health. So when you come to an office, when you come to a chiropractor, come to a provider, acupuncturist, masseuse, whoever, those are things that you're pursuing for your wellness goal, for good health, for maintaining longevity of social aspects, being able to pick up your grandkids, being able to run to the grocery store, being able to do house projects, things along those lines are in your wellness spectrum for maintaining health. Uh, on the other side, health, uh, health is... Oh, Let's go back. Health being free of injury and illness, you know, it goes back to that first problem. If you don't have any symptoms or discomfort, where do you fall in the health spectrum? And it's not always, you know, a black or white, it's definitely a shade of gray. Um, where I'm going with this for chiropractic is chiropractors come in a very wide variety and very wide difference. So when people talk about, hey, I see a chiropractor, well, why do you see the chiropractor? Are you reactive? Are you pro, uh, proactive? Are you trying to get over an injury? Are you trying to prevent an injury? Where I fall for my practice is that it's very much focused in the proactive aspects. Um, I don't have a whole lot of fancy bells and whistles. I don't have x-ray units in my office. I don't have ultrasounds. I don't have heat therapy tractions or other things like that. My main focus is the adjustment, and getting people out the door feeling functional and well. Um, with that being said, 
you know, chiropractors all focus on the nervous system, that brain-body connection and that communication being key. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's not always one size fit all. I'm happy to work with anyone, and I think most providers are, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that provider is right for you. Um, on that note, it is kind of tough, just because I'm happy to work with anyone, um, and I think most, most chiropractors are, but it doesn't mean I have all the right tools for you. So, wellness being a big piece of the pie, I guess, uh, you do need to eat right, sleep right, move right, poop right, think right, all those good things in order to maintain good and quality health and concurrence with your wellness. When you put them together, if you have good health and you have good wellness, you have a higher quality of life. I think most people would want a really high quality of life. You want to be able to pursue your functionality aspects. You want to be able to pursue your social aspects, your family aspects. Um, by concentrating more on that wellness aspects, by putting yourself first. Um, really good example, when I was at the golf outing, a gentleman came up to me, shook my hand, he's like, oh, so it's just like uh, maintaining a car. And it's like, yeah, I suppose. You know, you get your oil changed, you get your tires rotated, you change out the windshield wiper fluid, you do the transmission flush, all those same things. Your body is your vehicle. Uh, you need to maintain, you need to upkeep, you need to stretch, you need to breathe right, sleep right, eat right, poop right, think right, feel right, all those good things. Um, so, I guess in closing, I guess about chiropractic, uh, about myself, about just different healthcare options, you know, it's not a one size fit all. So if you have an experience with a chiropractor or a masseuse, an acupuncturist, a physical therapist, and it wasn't right for you, uh, I strongly recommend provide, or finding another practitioner or someone in a different field, different focus. Um, good example here for chiropractic, uh, I use a diversified approach, which is a bunch of different techniques all kind of thrown together. There's a practitioner in Lake Elmo, he's a NUCA doctor, which stands for National Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association. They only focus on C1, C0. You wouldn't really go to an upper, uh, upper cervical practitioner if you slipped and fell on your sacrum, for instance. Alternatively, there's plenty, uh, plenty of practitioners that I've worked with who only work with maternity, pediatrics, things like that. Chiropractors come in a very wide variety. So when you're looking for someone, you get recommendations, um, it's important to kind of have those conversations and discuss about, hey, what's your philosophy, where's your specialty, where's your expertise, and if they're focused on the wellness or your health. Um, nothing wrong with either. Uh, I would prefer, though, people focus a little bit more on the wellness outcomes, doing the right things for yourself and the longevity aspects. It's a race, it's not a sprint, it's a long-running marathon for everyone. So any questions kind of about the difference or questions about chiropractic? Uh, I guess that's, that's all I really got. What trends have you seen uh, in the last, well, since you've been in school mm. towards, towards chiropractic? Is it, is it catching on more? Is it becoming more? Or is there, or is this just kind of a, you know, everyone knows about it or, you know? You know, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, in school, the uh, faculty members talked about uh, what percentage of a group that you need to form habits or get the, um, oh, what is the uh, mathematical term, the, the tipping point or the, Oh, goodness. Yeah, sure. Um, it's about 10% that you need an average group size to gain you know, popularity or mainstream aspects. Right now in the United States, it's about 7% of the populace takes advantage of chiropractic care. So unfortunately, a little bit in the minority. 7%, I know. Yeah, it's definitely in the minority, which is really interesting. Um, what I've noticed just from my own you know, experience and stuff like that is majority of people that come into chiropractors are definitely reactive, where it's a slip and fall, it's a headache that I'm coming in for to maintain or get rid of or things along those lines. I was in a car accident. Uh, the switch and kind of getting people to think about it in the proactive aspects or getting away from you know, the pain, discomfort, and things along those lines. It's interesting. Um, it's definitely a, I would say, a younger kind of phenomena. Uh, I've definitely noticed in although I'm a little biased just because you know, my classmates and the people I was hanging out with in school are very much in the mindset of, hey, let's get on top of this and stay ahead of it rather than respond to it. So I don't really have a good answer for that one just because I've only been in practice for a couple of years. So. And being that we're part of Woodbury, Lake Elmo, you know, this, this whole area is becoming a medical destination, right? So you've got yeah. um, more holistic versus you know, the traditional healthcare. Talk about that a little bit. That's tough, that's a good one. Um, Coming from Northwestern, I don't know if anyone's ever visited that campus or been a part of that or talked to anyone else from Northwestern, but it's a very medically based chiropractic facility. It's very much, hey, you know, um, 
We had pharmacology classes, which was really interesting to me because that's outside my scope. You know, as a chiropractor, I can't even tell you to stop taking Tylenol or to take Tylenol. It falls outside. So I thought it was really goofy that they were expo uh, exposing us to pharmacology and these other medically based routes of practice because it's, it's not something that we can really contribute to. Um, here in the cities, it's definitely very heavy, uh, heavily medically oriented just because you know, you're right next to the university. You have a lot of healthcare facilities here that are very you know, medically minded. Uh, at some of the other practice um, schools and stuff like that, like Davenport, uh, which is Palmer, uh, you got Life down in Florida. Um, I can't remember the other one. National. And uh, those are much more philosophically minded where they're more about the chiropractic tenets and the 32 principles, which it's funny because in school we were taught the principles and they're just like, and now we're moving on to biochemistry, this, that, and the other thing, microbiology, et cetera. And it's just like, you know, on an average day when someone comes into my office, they're not going to ask me like, hey, you know, when you do this adjustment, what amino acids are triggered by this, you know, response of, you know, dopamine, serotonin, or, you know, um, it, it's just not, not reality. People want to know about the neurology. They want to know about how is this going to affect my herniated disc? How is this going to affect you know, the flow of communication down from this nervous system input. Um, so it's tough. I got to be honest, here in the cities, it's much more medically focused. But if you go to some of the other schools, it's much more philosophically fo uh, focused. Yeah. You talk about the difference between one end of the spectrum, the, the health versus the holistic, because I know we have other health professionals. You know, yeah, uh, chiropractic is definitely a piece of the piece of the pie. I, I am by no means the largest piece. I am by no means the answer to whatever your ailments are, uh, I am a concurrent or a supplemental item that you should think of as well as massage, pharmacology, stretching, physical therapy, sleeping right, all these aspects. Um, I, I love chiropractic. I think what I do is an amazing thing, you know, getting on the table and having people get up and you get adjusted and it's like, oh, wow, I really needed that. And like, I feel better. I feel looser. I feel stronger. I feel more upright. It's a large piece. Uh, is it the answer for everything? No. You know, am I going to be able to help um, you know, manage your, your insulin? Am I going to be able to help manage your high blood pressure? Am I going to be able to help manage um, you know, your anxiety to a certain degree? If you feel better, you know, maybe. Um, but much more of that falls into you know, other practitioners' courts. And that's really something where you have to be aware, hey, these are my limitations as a provider. And this is something I have to refer you out to for acupuncture for muscle aches or physical therapy for functionality performance. Um, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's nice having that kind of referral pattern, that, that knowledge of where your expertise ends, just because I don't want to keep you at the office for an hour, two hours, focusing on something that I know for a fact I can send you to someone else who would be able to help you in 15, 20 minutes. So um, I think it is important uh, as a provider to know where your shortcomings kind of are, I guess. So does that kind of answer your question a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So um, I know for me, if I am in need of some of those kinds of services, I tend to go toward what my insurance will cover. Oh, for sure. Than paying out of pocket. For sure. When I heard you mention that only 7% of people tend to use chiropractic, talk to me a little bit about the relationship or the correlation between health insurance, and that really could go for all of you um, who are practitioners. Uh, what role, either to the bad or to the good, does health insurance play sure. in how to create your customer base? Sure. Going back to school, uh, when you're done with your first six trimesters, you start going out into clinics and you start getting to work with providers and doing a little bit more hands-on adjustments and kind of seeing how uh, offices operate and stuff like that. My first internship experience, I was in a uh, very heavily insurance-based practice and it was more focused on workers' comp, um, primary injury, car accidents, things along those lines. Um, that's been my only insurance experience since I was in school and out of school. Um, on that note, you know, insurance is really great about handling injuries on that, in that nature, you know, where it's, um, you know, not that it's all about, you know, finances and stuff like that, but chiropractors very heavily focus on that field because of the reimbursement rate for insurance. Uh, I remember it was a big complaint uh, from the, the practitioner that I was working with, depending on who was coming in the door and what insurance they were using, just because it's like, hey, you know, when we do this adjustment on patient A, for instance, we get to do these therapies and these modalities we get reimbursed 90% of our services, you know, this is a $200, $300 visit. Alternatively, someone else comes in, we might get $15, $7 and stuff like that. Um, it is goofy just because in Minnesota, 
Um, being a no-fault state, you do have a large sum of money associated with healthcare costs if you're involved in an accident or injury in that nature. Um, so people really get to take advantage of much more care that way, at least from, from what I was experienced. Um, you know, x-rays are covered, your modality, uh, modalities and therapies and stuff like that. Versus that same person who is just seeking wellness care, you know, are you going to want to pay $300 out of pocket every time you go in for an adjustment, e-stim, traction, heat, you know, the rolling table, this, that, and the other thing? Probably not. You know, so there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, the insurance I have seen, I was working with people and they were like, you know, I feel really good when I come in, but I only have 15 visits that my insurance will cover and I'm coming in three times a week. I'm only going to be able to see you for five weeks. You know, there's another 47 weeks of the year here. You, w w what do I do for my care? And it's just like, that's a good question. You know, you can come in and pay out of pocket, you know, but do you want to scale back on some of these items? So there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, part of the advantage of, I guess I didn't mention that. Uh, Cairo Way is a non-insurance based practice, I guess. So it's just directly with you. There's advantages for that. I get to see you more times than a dozen in the year. Um, has a little bit more flexibility that way as well, but there is a little bit more uh, rigidity as well just because, you know, there's, there is a limit for what people are willing to pay out of pocket for wellness and preventative care as well. Sam. Sure. That's a, that's a lot of time and money there. It is, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, like I said, you know, um, <laughs> it's tough because from my own experience and how I run my office, you know, I have a membership aspect, much like a gym membership where you get multiple visits in a month for you to take advantage of. I also have a paper visit option where you can stop in one time adjustment and go on your way. There's advantages for both, and disadvantages for both as well. Um, I'm very much in the mindset where any item that you do for health care is better than none at all. So if you come in and get adjusted maybe once every six months, that's better than getting no adjustment in six months. If you can stretch on the daily, if you can do some foam rolling, if you can do some you know, uh, easy outdoor activity, if you can go for a walk, if you can get up and do those kinds of simple items, you know, it doesn't have to be, hey, I'm going to you know, eat like an Olympian, I'm going to train like an Olympian, I'm going to perform like an Olympian just for daily functionality and stuff like that. Um, you know, it is tough just because there is only so much time in the day and there is only so much resources that you can take advantage of. Um, you know, not to lecture too much, but it doesn't take much to do a five minute stretch session or do a very easy yoga, you know, just something very simple like that just to kind of get the joints moving, get the blood flowing, get up and walk around. Uh, you know, even a gym, a gym class classic, you know, do some jumping jacks. Like it's very easy things that you can do just to get the blood moving and um, body, body grooving. Uh, a really good phrase that one of my teachers liked to say is uh, motion is lotion. And uh, the more you move, the more, the better off you're going to be. You know, it's a very easy basic physics principle. Uh, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. If you're going to use your body, your body's going to maintain that motion much longer. If you're going to be sedentary, lack thereof, you're going to start getting more rigidity, muscle tightness, bad posture, things along those lines. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Yes? Oh, interesting. Or, yeah. Like just masseuse or chiropractic? I don't actually. You know, uh, when I when I graduated, I had 130 classmates that I graduated with, and one of which I'm aware of went into craniosacral uh, therapy. But she moved out east, so it's not really a direct referral where I can send someone and say, "Hey, go to Virginia for the weekend and go go see this person." Um, yeah, it's tough, you know. Uh, there is a, a masseuse that I met in Stillwater that focuses more on like the myofascial aspects and like the, the tempo, you know, mandibular and more, more cranial. But as for chiropractic related, no. I, I don't know anyone that practices SOT, so. And I wouldn't know the difference, so I thought maybe it would be related. Yeah, no, uh, it is tough, you know. So when you do look for a practitioner and say, hey, you know, they have DC after their name, but then going on their information page and say, hey, they practice Gonstead or they practice Nuka, they practice Nimo or Pedabon or all these different name brand techniques. It is tough because not every chiropractor practices or performs the same, same functionality. So, any additional questions? No. 
So that's kind of the general aspects of health and wellness. And then last little bit, uh, one quick announcement for myself. Uh, I'm in North St. Paul currently, but I will be moving to Lake Elmo in the very near future. So I'll be moving there in September. Um, I would like to do some kind of ribbon cutting or grand opening, but I have yet to get that determined and I'll be working with my franchise. And as that gets a little closer, I'll have a little bit more information that I'll be pushing out to all you guys. So uh, thank you. It was a pleasure to stand here and kind of rant and rave about health and wellness and chiropractic for a little bit. Um, if you guys got any questions, unfortunately, I did not bring any business cards, which is, is pretty par for the course for myself. I, yeah, yeah, so that works as well. Um, you know, you can always give me a call. I got to be honest, I don't answer my phone very well, but I do respond to emails very well. So anything else? Going once, twice, sold. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Austin.